GearNetwork.com. The following is a presentation of the Gear Radio Network. Hello, good morning. <laughs> this is the former governor of California, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and you are listening to Chaz and Jay on the Fantasy Football Bros podcast. <laughs> These guys, <laughs> they're so funny, and they're going to help you win some money. Hey, that rhymed. Ah! Here we go, here we go, here we go. Hey, everything on three. Number three. Win on one. Oh. Win on three, one, two, three. Hey, hey next up. Next. <laughs> Eyes on three. Everything on three, one. Every string. <laughs> You are now listening to the Fantasy Football Bros Podcast. Welcome back, everybody, to the Fantasy Football Bros Podcast. It's your boy. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Chaz, and just the two for today, I am joined by the original co host. The man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Jay Coleman. Jay Coleman, what's up, dog? What's going on? And another drop, perfect for um, us right now. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah, it has. It's been a while. Um, you know, we go every other week or so during the uh, during the off season, and I believe that the last episode we did, we were in between the Super Bowl and the championship games, and um, so we still have yet to talk about this Super Bowl, which we'll we'll discuss. But I didn't go back, but my Super Bowl prediction was right uh, when we when we were actually picking the Super Bowl. I picked the Chiefs and the Swifts to win, and I was correct. Do you remember what you did? <clears throat> yeah, I picked the 49ers. Womp womp. <laughs> You regret that? Pick? I mean, I thought that Kansas City was going to win, but I really wanted the 49ers. But <laughs> um, let, the let's, Swifties let's talk about wouldn't it. let them lose. No way. But let's talk about it. I mean, I, the best thing of the Super Bowl, and I sound like a, a soccer mom here, was the halftime show because I thought the game was boring as fuck. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Oh, and like I, you know, I, I mean, some people say that I and I am a avid Usher fan, and I thought the performance was great, but that's just more of throwing shade at the game because I thought the game was awful. I thought the game was absolutely awful. Yeah, I, I and, didn't watch most of it. So yeah, and the simple fact that like the Chiefs won just like I thought goes to overtime. Blah 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 blah. The narrative, narrative, narrative. It's just so it's so boring, and I'm so glad and relieved that this season is over so glad and relieved that the season is over and hopefully like the nfl just is like all right we did it we rigged it to have taylor swift win the super bowl let's just get back to normal next year nah yeah yeah i I don't see that happening um and another thing that pissed me off about the super bowl is and you know I go crazy with the Brock Purdy narrative, but I'm sitting here watching the post game show, and I'm watching like I'm watching Patrick Mahomes like holding his his Super Bowl trophy, his what third right, his third Super Bowl trophy, the, yeah, his third Super Bowl MVP. Patrick Mahomes is holding this, and literally the announcer, while Patrick Mahomes is celebrating his third Super Bowl, is like, we learned today that Brock Purdy is not a game manager, and I turn off the fucking thing. <laughs> like, are you shitting me right now? The, the baby boy, the princess of the NFL, is celebrating his third NFL thing, and there, what we learned today is Brock Purdy, who played like garbage, is not a game manager? That's what we learned. Yeah. Okay. It's so awful, and... I'm glad uh, I brought him up because I I could share screen this, but I don't have it set up right. Um, I have a photo or I have uh, some um, stats that I want to bring up to you real quick. And uh, I want to compare this. This is from ESPN. In their first 27 starts with the 49ers, including playoffs. Are you ready for these stats? And yeah. uh, maybe, maybe I'll put it in post here. This is from ESPN. 
Brock Purdy, 21 and 6, 67% completion percentage, 67.7% completion percentage, 248 yards per game, 48 to 14 TD, two interceptions, and 110 passer rating. Good, right? And, and and Brock Purdy walks on water and is the son of God. And in the first 27 starts, including playoffs, the guy that everyone sh- the, the guy that everyone shits on, including us, Jimmy Garoppolo. Wait for this, Jay. 21 and 6, 67% completion percentage, literally the exact same as Brock Purdy. 246 yards to Brock Purdy's 248 yards, the same. 40 to 24, and Brock Purdy was a little better, 48 to 14, and 97 passer rating to 110. But why does one walk on water and is the son of Christ, and the other one is complete garbage and gets shipped off and can't play a game in the NFL? Why is the narrative so different? Uh, I don't know. And they both have one Super Bowl loss, too, in their first 27 games. So, like, I don't get it. And and it's just, it's, it's infuriating. And like, it's just so over it. I'm so fucking over it. Oh, it's over. No more Brock Purdy for a few months. No more fucking Travis Kelsey for a few months. No more Taylor Swift for a few months. We have to look up to what Justin Fields is doing and Caleb Williams is doing. And I couldn't be more excited, honestly, <laughs> to be, to be out of this hole and look forward to next year. <clears throat> And just be done with this trash. trash it's gonna trash. it's gonna go by quick though, and we'll be right back at it. <sighs> well, I have a creme brulee imperial stout. I've drank this before. It is very strong. My face is gonna is gonna like crumble when I drink this. <sighs> it's been sitting in my fridge for like a month. Oh god. Oh no. Oh. Mm, it heard me. Okay, I caught it. Okay. All right. So we are here today to talk about some free agencies. Uh, and we want to pick our most, I don't know what to call it, our most exciting, you know, signings for teams. We made a rule that we can only pick the Bills once. Did you pick the Bills? Yes. Okay. So we can only pick the Bills once because you know we'll talk about, you guys know we'll talk about them all day. So we both picked the Bills once and a couple other players to teams. There's a bunch of free agents coming up. And we're throwing basically salary cap out the window. This is more or less like what we think what a perfect fit would be for the perfect team. For uh, for for instance, whoever we say for the Bills, probably not going to sign them because they don't have no fucking money. Yeah, exactly. But we can hope and we can dream. And uh, we, you know, so I'm going to bring up this article here from um, – for Pro Football Focus, I think this is. Yeah, Pro, Pro Pro Football Focus. We'll go over this. It's the top 200 free agents, but we will talk about – We will, I'll just bring up the top 10. We don't have to talk about all of them. But from Pro Football Focus, the number one free agent is Chris Jones of the Kansas City Chiefs. It's interesting, but I think I, 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 I can agree. Yeah. Number two is good. Kirk Cousins from the Vikings. What do you think about that? Is that the I, number two free agent available? I don't know. I'm, I mean. He's by it's, far and away the best quarterback available. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's not even close. Like, who's number two? Baker? Like, Yeah, probably. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's Kirk Cousins. And, you know, quarterbacks are much needed, right? Yeah. So I can see him being a. The, the second overall quarterback. Number three, Josh Allen, huh? Of the Jaguars, which is interesting. It's a very interesting. Um, you always need a pass rusher, so, you know, that's who the Bills are probably going to sign. Uh, <laughs> number four, T. Higgins of the Bengals. Interesting. Very interesting. And I like their comparison to Mike Williams from a couple years ago. T. Higgins and Mike Williams are very similar in their careers. Big guys, big bodied guys stuck behind an alpha receiver their whole careers. Yeah, right. Mike so Williams good. might be getting cut too, though. No, there you go. Brian Burns from the Panthers, another edge rusher. This guy, it even says it here. They've been trying. People have been trying to trade this guy for years. It even says here, Burns cannot seem to escape Carolina as the team turns down trade offers <laughs> and consistently loses football games. Um, number six, defensive lineman Justin Metabuke, I believe it is. Uh, I think he's more of an interior. Uh, number seven, Christian Wilkins from the Dolphins. Number eight, Antoine Winfield from the Bucks. Number nine, Jalen Johnson from the Bears, a corner. 
And the 10th overall is Legereus Sneed, a corner from the Kansas City Chiefs. So there is your top 10. Did you happen to pick any of those top 10 in for one of your players? Uh, one. You did one. Okay, cool. Um, How about you? I did not take any of these top 10 guys. Nope. Um, and I do want to bring another um, thing into here. Did it change here? Right? It changed? Yep. Okay. All right, so we're going to bring – this is the Sport Track website, and it's going to show us the top at each position. And we're just going to go through a few names real quick, update it to QB, just so people can get an idea of what's coming. This isn't necessarily in any order. So I'm just throwing out names that I see that are worth talking about. Get out of here, whatever this is. We got, for quarterbacks, Kirk Cousins, Ryan Tannehill, Jacoby Brissett, Mitch Trubisky, Tyrod, uh, Mariota. Down here you got Baker, Teddy Bridgewater retired. Uh the new uh, old man, Joe Flacco, yep. uh, big, big Dick Josh, jo- Josh Dobbs is there. Oh, Gardner Minshew, Drew Locke, Sam Darnold, no one incredible. Easton Stick, Easton Stick for show. So obviously your your best bets is Kirk or Baker. Yeah. But we have a shit ton of running backs to touch on. I mean, we might do a more in-depth for agency show at some point this year, but I just figure we'll run over. Look at these names, though. God damn it freaking things stop okay look at these names jay derrick henry josh jacobs tony pollard saquon barkley austin eckler cordell patterson gus edwards zeke singletary clyde swift foreman damian harris uh jk dobbins kareem hunt shot penny aj Dillon, uh antonio gibson zach moss a lot of big names there jay mm-hmm. a lot lot did you take did you take one for your yeah okay cool cool i dude i do have one as well so i'm wondering where you went and let's take a glance at receivers a lot of names here too a lot of names here too mike evans who is younger than i actually thought mike evans is only 30 by the way doesn't he seem like he's 40 yeah <clears throat> seems like it but he's only 30 um odell beckham tyler boyd curtis samuel Paris Campbell, Mikkel Hardman. My God, these are in such weird order. Marquise yeah. Hollywood Brown, Calvin Ridley, uh, T. Higgins, Michael Pittman. Um, oh, our boy, Trent yep. Sherfield. Got to lock him up. Um, Chase Claypool, uh, Scotty Miller, Isaiah McKenzie. We can get him back, Jay. Yeah, we can if we wanted to. We probably will because we're yeah. trash. Um. Oh, Gabriel Davis. But that I know you hate him. But that's going to be a loss if we lose him. Yeah, we'll be fine. <laughs> okay, and I'm assuming you picked at least one of these guys as well. Yes. Okay. So there is. There you have it. There's are some of the top free agents. So, um, do you have yours kind of in an idea of like three to one? Hmm. Sure. Okay, well, I'll start with my three, um, uh, which I would pick, you know, perfect fit for the perfect team, perfect scenario. And we're going with, um, oh, I got a drop for it, actually. We are going to go with reigning, defending, undisputed Super Bowl champions. They need themselves a veteran option at wide receiver. They haven't had any receiving leadership or, frankly, ever uh, receiver play this past year. Uh, they had it a little bit with um, with uh, Juju the year before. But looking at the free agent list and trying to find out, like, somebody that wants to win a title that's willing to cut, you know, his pay a little bit and would fit right in and help lead that team, I think the perfect signing for the Kansas City Chiefs would be Odell Beckham Jr. He's come, you know, he's coming off of an AFC loss to the Chiefs. He um, he's turning 32 this year. He is uh, wants to win another Super Bowl. I mean, he won the one, but he was hurt, and I mean, he's made it show that he wants to win another Super Bowl. And I think that team could use some veteran leadership in the receiver room. And I think he's the perfect fit. What do you think about Odell Beckham to the Chiefs? I like it. It makes sense. Um, because they'll definitely be able to get him at a discount because of his age and he's been hurt and here and there and he didn't do that much this past year, but he still you know, wasn't bad. Yeah. He wasn't bad. He wasn't, you know. Yeah. And he wasn't in a more out, run, but, 
run quarterback as yeah. opposed to a throwing quarterback. And, yeah. and, and that's, you know, so I think Odell Beckham to the Chiefs, that would make me fear them more. I mean, even and I should fear them because, you know, they beat the Bills. <laughs> but um, I don't fear them as much, you know, and I think the Chiefs bringing him in, him, Rashi Rice, Sky Moore, they need they need somebody like Odell Beckham. Right. They, yeah. They have- if if uh, um, Kelsey retires too, which who knows if he will or not, but I think he already said he's coming back. Did he? Okay. Yeah, he's already coming back. So, well, that's mine. So I think that's a good place to start. So, what is your number three? My my number three. I'm just gonna get it out of the way because it's the most unrealistic, and it's a twofer, <clears throat> and it involves the Bills. Um, we would we would have to do something miraculous, and it's never going to happen, but I would love to have either one of these guys and that's Calvin Ridley or Pittman mm-hmm. on this team. Yeah. I, I mean, I, we know the reasons, but go on. I, it's, uh, I mean, they're studs and I think lining up opposite of Diggs, and we'll with one of these wide receivers, I think we'll definitely find out is Diggs just, shot at this point in his career or or is it that I don't know he just not getting open or whatever but I think this would take off a little bit of pressure and open up things more for both guys because their teams are going to have to decide who they're going to defend because they're both dangerous so and I want to give as much as I shit on Diggs through the end of the season I was looking like again at some of his numbers and stuff and I do want to give him a break in the simple fact that his downturn came as soon as Joe Brady took over. So perhaps it was scheme. Perhaps it was scheme. Yeah, possibly. Perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> so let's let's uh let's just say it was scheme and he has something still to him. Uh who would you rather have line up next to him if you if you can only pick one? Who I mean, who's your guy? Uh I think I think Pittman. I think I would take well, I'm going to jump right on the bandwagon because this was my number uh, two pick, and this is I want Michael Pittman to the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really do. I've said that for a year. He is the perfect guy we need. He is big. He is fast. He is six foot four, two 223 pounds. He has shown it. He has shown it with no no quarterback play, really. I mean, yeah, but I mean, decent. I don't want to say yeah. that. He's like, decent quarterback play. So it's not fair to say no, but the guy was excellent at USC. He comes from, um, he comes from a, you know, pedigree. His father was a running back in the NFL. He has been nothing but good in the NFL. He has been nothing but good. He has been good every year in the NFL. I, I think it would take our offense to the next level too. I, I, I really, mean, oh. a core of, of Diggs, Pittman, you got Knox, you got, What's his name? The other tight end. Oh, the one that looks like our boy Zach. Yeah. Kincaid. Yeah. Kincaid. And then uh, James Cook. Well, Scary offense right there. And and, and this, we honestly, we need it because we can't keep losing to Kansas City and everything else. So. And this is your future. This guy is your future. Like he's yeah. 20 years old. Yeah. Diggs is what? 30, 31? Yeah. Somewhere around there. This, this guy's your future if you can get him. But we're both pretty much in agreement that. He's not coming. Well, I mean, the only way I think it's going to happen is for they either they're going to have to restructure um, Tre'Davious White or get rid of him and restructure um, Josh a little bit. Josh and uh, Von Miller. Von Miller. Yeah, that's the only way to make it happen. But it's still it's so hard because we're so deep in the hole already without even doing anything. So. And I just want to point out before we move on from Michael Pittman that he's coming off a career year. How many how many receptions do you think he had this year? Uh, just take a guess. One twenty. He had one hundred and nine. So you're close. One hundred and nine receptions. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and he's averaging more. He's averaging about eleven yards a reception. So that's what and, you want. That's awesome. And, and if we touchdowns. brought it, but if we brought him into. You'd be saying Gabe Davis who? 
Oh, we, we, absolutely, but so. the, pro, the difference is, is Michael Pittman's probably going to sign a deal for $18 million a year. Gabe Davis is going to sign one for like six. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Right? So like, I mean, that, that's where I go with that. I mean, he was hyping himself up in that Instagram video with uh, how he holds first for a whole bunch of fucking stats. But Well, I, I just, I would like to re-sign Gabe if we can. But if we, I mean, sure, if we got Michael Pittman or Calvin Ridley. Or Odell Beckham. <laughs> like, I'd be like, hell yeah. Or Mike so, Evans. Or Mike Evans. Or T. Higgins. Or Trent Sherfield. <laughs> <laughs> as we as we like to uh, as we like to say for that. Nah, nah bruh. bruh. Okay, so that was my number two. What's your number two? My fit? number two. Uh, you'll, you might like this. I don't know. Uh, Kirk Cousins to the Raiders. Oh, okay. Interesting. All right, go on. Go on. Um, I mean, he's probably going to end up a... a in Minnesota again, but I mean, the Raiders need someone. They have good weapons, so I think you know maybe that's what they need to finally put something together. So, so they get Kirk Cousins. You think Devonte Adams stays? Yeah. Okay. Fair. Very. Very. For fair. sure. I mean, they, they were in the same division forever, so Devonte knows he's a good quarterback. Yeah. So, and we uh, seen I mean, and we seen what he's done, you know, with uh, Double J. So, I mean. You should be able to do it with Devontae. Double J here again. Um, what do you think about the rumor of Justin Fields Feels so good. going to uh, the Raiders? I mean, I, it's maybe. I mean, it'd be I mean, pretty crazy for the Bears to cut ties with them because they uh, got the you know, first overall pick. That's true. So it's like, you know, if, if they're moving from Justin Fields, it's because they're taking Caleb Williams. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, and I, and I saw an interesting thing today about those two, and we'll have a draft show later, but it's like K, Caleb Williams' floor could be Justin C, Justin's Justin Fields' best we've seen so far. So Caleb Williams can always – if Caleb Williams is shitty, he'd be about as good as Justin Fields. Yeah. And I was like, okay, that's, that's tough because as much shit as we've given Justin Fields here, he turned it on at the end of the season. Yeah. The last two years, both he has turned it on at the end of the season, so he's shown it. But he still doesn't throw the ball great. <laughs> no, that's I'm still not convinced on him. So yeah. I, I, if I was a Raiders fan, I'd probably want Kirk Cousins over Justin Fields. I mean, I am a Raiders fan, and thinking about it, I don't know if Cousins is the right move. Now, I'm not trying to say that you're wrong or they're not going to do it or anything like that. But the only reason I don't think Cousins might not be the right move is because I don't think the Raiders are going anywhere, and he's what 35. Yeah. That's the only reason, like, I, I don't see that being the right move. But yeah, but I mean, he stayed in Minnesota, and they haven't really done anything. So yeah, true. I mean, they could have won the division. Uh, you know, like yeah. if they would have, if he would have stayed healthy, they could have been in it. But I, I do agree that a I could see the Raiders doing it, but b I also agree with you when you said I think he's going to stay. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think they're going to resign him to like a two-year deal and draft a quarterback. Yeah. It, it it would be pretty shocking if he didn't stay, but you never know. No, that's good. That's interesting. I could see that happening. All right, we're going to go to my number one fit. So my number three fit was Odell Beckham to the Chiefs. My number two pick was um, was Michael Pittman to the Bills. And my number one pick, and I think this makes too much sense. This is a running back. Top flight running back, of course. This guy is trying, of course, to win a Super Bowl. He's in his final. Uh, he's in his final countdown. I think he just reached the age of thirty, and he's going to go to a team that likes to pound the ball and needs a big running back to play off of their their um, outstanding uh, quarterback who just won the NFL MVP. And could you imagine Derrick Henry with Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens? That'd be wild. That I is mean, the perfect scenario yeah. for him. Yeah, probably. They need a big bruiser. I mean, look how good um if you didn't see at home I did quotes, air quotes. Look how good um Gus Edwards actually did. Yeah. Right? Gus playing off of Lamar. Because you know, some people think when you got a shifty quarterback that likes to run, you need like a shifty running back. No, 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 no. You need the opposite because that gives you speed and power. 
And that gives you the, and to have that option. And that's what they are. They're options for him to hand it off and have Derrick Henry run through you or to take it and run away. It is, it will run fits for the defenses in, in, in the AFC uh, North and uh, the AFC in general. And he's got one good year left. And he doesn't have to be the focus of everything because Lamar Jackson, two-time NFL MVP, is your focus. Yeah. You know, you're going to lose Odell. So you bring in another veteran. You still got Zay Flowers, who Dom showed that he's the alpha there already. You know, and, and, and they're, they're good to go. I think if they sign Derrick Henry, they, to me, might be the AFC favorites to make the Super Bowl. So yeah, I, I, I can see that. The only thing is, it, it's so scary is like, is age going to finally catch up with him or not? Like he's defied it for so long that it's like, is this going to be the year or is he still going to defy age somehow? Well, I mean, it showed, he showed it a little bit this past year, a little Um, bit, but the team was also horrendous. So, I mean, he was the focus. Yeah. You know, and to be fair to this man, he just turned 30 and he is um he still ran for almost 1200 yards last year and 12 rece- and 12 touchdowns <laughs> which right? is crazy that but that's what's like is it fine like is this going to be the year is he still just going to just keep on trucking like he's been like it seems like age doesn't matter to him mm-hmm. like we've that's seen we've seen running backs fall off way before him that mm-hmm. have been in incredible shape mm-hmm. and and so he just, he's like, nah, fuck that. Well, he is just the specimen. He's a, he's a, he's a specimen. He's real. And I think if he goes there, that he is just raring to go and w- trying to win a Super Bowl and is okay with not getting, he's not going to probably have 1,200 rushing yards. He might only no. have 800, but that's, he'll be happy. Yeah. And he'll, and 800 rushing yards with that team, with Lamar getting, 800 rushing yards is frightening. It's yeah. absolutely frightening. And and on a side note, if they don't get him, I think they should go after who have I, who I've always called baby Derrick Henry, even though we 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 put him in the graveyard is AJ Dillon. AJ Dillon should go there if they don't get Derrick Henry. But Derrick Henry would be frightening. So, what is your number one? My number one, and I'm picking a running back for this as well. And uh, it's Josh Jacobs to the Chargers. Oh, I do like that. Yeah. I mean, that offense would be extremely scary with Josh Jacobs running back. He's still 26, so he's got years. And if they really want to win with uh, Herbert and stuff, it's it's going to be now is the time to do it. And see, a, see a Austin Eckler. They, he's dead. So, I mean. <laughs> That's what I meant. Yeah. So I think Josh Jacobs would be perfect for the Chargers. No, I really like the one, especially bringing in Jim Harbaugh. Yeah. Like, I mean, he just ran down the throat of Alabama and Washington, but nobody really cares. But he ran down the throat of Alabama, you know, to to win that championship because he didn't, you know. And, and, and there's a lot of arguments that J.J. McCarthy – you know, isn't that great of a quarterback. That's why they ran or they just ran the ball because it was working. Right. Yeah. So to bring that mentality, but to walk in there with Justin Herbert and Keenan Allen and maybe Mike Williams, if he's still there. And then the other guy who is kind of a bust, I would say Quinston Johnson was a bust. Yeah. So far. Yeah. Year one. He's just year one. It's not mean cut him, but they probably, Thankfully, they didn't should have taken which what I said they should have took was was uh, Dalton Kincaid. Yeah, probably, they definitely would have been better. That's for sure. Yeah, and I already can tell you right now, I I will put my name on it. Dalton Kincaid is going to have a better career than Quentin Johnston. Oh yeah, for sure. So you know they definitely they struck out on that. But new regime, Jim and, Harbaugh, yeah. Josh Jacobs, that would be great. Yeah, it would be. Hell yeah, you, you, me, and you. We, hey man, cheers. We won this. That yeah. was great. We did, we did good that one. Yeah, the, those were some good picks. Hell yeah. Well, we figured this was kind of going to be a short episode, just because it was just the two, just the two with us. Up, 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 up. Uh, uh, <clears throat> speaking of Dalton Kincaid, you know what's really fucking hurting the Bills right now? What's that? And I hate to admit it, but the Dawson Knox contract. Oh. 
on top of everything else, it's looking terrible right now. I mean, is there is there a market for him? I bet you there's not. I don't, I don't know. I mean, and I and you know I love Knox, but I mean, Adam's got his name tattooed on his arm. So did you know that? No. Uh, oh, Dawson, if I did, I forget. So, but I mean, Dawson Knox signed Adam's arm, and and uh, <laughs> Adam got a tattoo. So I mean, it's it's not looking great that contract. So there's, there's a lot of them that's not looking great. Uh, Von, of course, Von Miller's, but Trey White. I mean, it's like you know, and I'm not I'm not ready to put Von Miller behind the shed, but I'm almost ready. I'm almost ready to put Trey White behind the shed. They're both about to be going to the glue factory. I just want to give Von Miller the benefit of the doubt that he was really good. And then he tore his ACL, came back early, and was crappy. So let's give him one more chance. How many games are you going to give him? I mean, you got to. I think he's got to be roaring for the first half of the season. I mean, it's over a year and a half. By the time this season starts, it's literally almost two years. And he's an older guy, so give him that time. Yeah. He he tore his ACL before and came back, but he was, you know, 27, not 35 or whatever. So, like, give him that chance to come back. He, I think his career has earned that to give him that chance. Yeah, probably. I'd you know, agree. so give him that chance to come back because the year before he was wrecking, wreaking havoc in the Super Bowl, when he went out, for us, I believe he was leading us in sacks. And then he got hurt, and then he came back and was slow. And, yeah. okay, it sucks. But To, to be Ray fair, too, <clears throat> we all knew that contract wasn't going to pay out for what we were going to get. So we all, we when we signed him, it was already, we already knew that it was going to be a lopsided contract. So. But nobody was going to give a fuck if they won a Super Bowl. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, that, and that was what the big, the big issue was. And our, I agree with some people that says our window has closed, but that just doesn't mean forget about it. That just means we're probably not winning the Super Bowl this year. You yeah. have to re- figure it out. I mean, probably only because of all these bad contracts, and we're so far in the hole. I mean, it's like well, last I checked, I think it's like we're negative. 50 or 60, I think, maybe even more already. Yep. So, I mean. But to be fair to the Bills, and Brandon Bean has, has, has done stuff. He has, but I mean, this would be a miracle. I mean, this is the worst it's ever been. We got a lot of holes to fill, too. I mean, you got cornerback, wide receiver. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as much as we rag on them for all that they're caring about, they need to retool the defensive line. Yep. Floyd's a free agent. Yep. Epinel is a free agent. You know, Von. So you have right now. I think under contract, you got Von Miller and um, Ed Oliver. Yeah. So as much as we do, oh, and, and Rousseau. Yep. So like, that's great. That's a that's actually a really good start. There's absolutely no depth. No. And, and, and don't be surprised, Bills fans, when they draft a lineman in the first round again. Don't be surprised. Well, so where do you want them to go with their first round pick? Because I know like a lot of fans want a wide receiver, and then like a lot of an- analysts are coming out and saying that they should go cornerback now. Yeah, I what I want them to do at their position is best player available. So looking at like where people are going, you know, a guy that's like going kind of later in the first round is. Uh, Shit, what's his name? Uh, Johnson. Uh, fuck, I, you you threw me on the spot here. But is the other? I think is the other quarterback at uh, receiver at LSU. Hang on, let me let me pull up a mock draft here. I'm just I'm just bl- um, bl- blanking on this guy's name. That we he didn't uh, he didn't pick us to take him. But I know. Uh, here we go. Daniel Jeremiah's mock draft 2.0. Okay, so I'm just drafting. I'm just going off of okay, so Brian, what the hell is it? Brian Thomas. I'm sorry, Brian. Brian Johnson is the singer of ACDC, by the way. <laughs> uh, Brian Thomas is the other LSU wide receiver. Okay, I was right. Um, so they don't have us taking him. By the way, they have Houston taking him. Imagine that. <laughs> Houston already has two. Yeah, I know. So 
so he's going 23 overall. We're picking what, 28? 28 overall. Yeah. Um, another receiver here, Adone Mitchell, is going 26 overall just before us. Um, what I like about Brian Thomas Jr., even though I forgot his name, <laughs> is uh his high his size and his speed. Here we go. Brian Thomas Jr., six foot four, two hundred and five pounds. We're losing a fast big receiver and Gabe Davis. Yep. So this guy would be a great replacement as our number two for great Gabe Davis. Like so this is the kind of guy that you would get from um this would be Michael Pittman without having to sign a big contract, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully, right? Um, so that is who I would like in that range. Like, of course, I'm going to say Marvin Harrison Jr., but that's not happening. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, um, Brian Thomas Jr., this mock draft going 23. Another guy I can see the Bills looking at, and this is going to be controversy. Do you know who Cooper DeJean is? No. Cooper DeJean is a cornerback um, from Iowa. And there is a lot of um, controversy with this guy because he is he is he, he they said he could play safety, but if he gets drafted as a cornerback, he is going to be the first white cornerback drafted since like 1996. Because yeah. and so uh, you know, of course, yeah. there's controversy because of his race. Um, so and there's a lot of people saying that he could play safety. Well, guess what? The Bills need a cornerback and they need safety. Yep. And given what I've shit on for these bills the entire the time, this is a smiley, happy, frilly haired boy. <laughs> and that's their type. Black or white, it doesn't matter. <laughs> this guy's just their type. But the fact that he is, I mean, a lot of people have him, they have him going 25th to Green Bay before us here. But he, they have him ranked here as like the third or fourth corner coming off the board, but he would be the first safety. So, like, to me, that is somewhere I'm looking at. But, of course, and he's probably right, Daniel Jeremiah has them taking Chop Robinson, a, uh edge rusher from Penn State. <laughs> so, which, whatever, we need that, too. But those are the n- names that I'm looking at for now. Brian Thomas Jr. and Cooper DeJean. Well, what are you thinking? I mean, I like those those two picks. That uh, I think we have to go wide receiver or cornerback in the first round just because if we lose Gabe Davis and we don't get anyone and you have no idea what's going to happen with White. So right. at least we got Russell Douglas. So, I mean. That's true. He was great. He, yeah. Great. I mean, he's our de facto number one. So, yeah, he played great. So, it, it's interesting. I'm glad. I'm glad you brought that up, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll have some uh, mock draft stuff coming up in this mock draft. He had four quarterbacks going at the top eight picks. So that's not that absurd. You see that a lot, actually. Yeah. So would you do something? I saw this random. Um, I saw this random uh, trade proposal. I don't think it would happen. But what if the Bills traded Stefan Diggs to the Arizona Cardinals to get the fourth overall pick to take a court to to to, to take a receiver? So so you're giving away uh, your say they did that and they're first right to go up to f- fourth and take Marvin Harrison or at worst Malik Neighbors who is awesome as well. So we give them Diggs and our first. To, get, to go up to fourth to get either Harrison or Malik neighbors. Um, is it too much? Possibly, but I might still pull the trigger anyway just because it would get us out of the contract. A, get us out of the contract. You're right. And then B, you know, if it's Harrison. I mean, Harrison's the highest graded receiver in years. Yeah. You know, and, and Malik neighbors is just as good. Malik neighbors willed his... Malik Neighbors quarterback won the Heisman, you know, because, and a lot of people think it's because of him. And, the, 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 you know, Jaden Daniels, two wide receivers were Malik Neighbors, Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas Jr., yeah. what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, so I, I might do it, especially I think we're probably all going to assume that this probably isn't going to be the year for us anyway, just with all the cap issues and the uncertainty of, you know, is Trey going to be healthy? Is Von Miller going to be good? Is Diggs going to be any good? 
So, I mean, what, what do you got to lose, really? Yeah. So, and I don't think they'll pull something like that, but that would be interesting. You know, and people would be like, well, why would Arizona do that? Well, because they're sticking with their quarterback and now they're giving him a legit weapon. Because when he last time Kyler Murray had a legit weapon, he was great. Yep. So you're giving Kyler Murray a legit weapon and you, you're, you know, for a few years. And, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't think they would do it, but no. It was, just, I, it was some really random thing I saw. I, I don't crazy. think the Bills would do it. And I don't think Arizona would take on that contract either. So, right. But they have the room. Yeah. All right. Well, that will bring this shorter episode to a close. So um, not bad. Forty minutes. No, nah, not bad. Two of us. Minutes. Yeah, this is the OG man. This was the first like six, seven episodes. We can do it, and it sounded just as good. We we haven't improved at all. No. We just got now. People can just see our dumb faces on yeah. on, on YouTube. We don't know shit about fuck. No. Nope. Not at all. All right, Jay. Well, thank you for joining us. Yeah. No problem. And to everyone at home, thank you for checking it out. We This is our 81st episode. How about that, guys? 81st episode. Damn. Very, nice. Very nice. So thanks for sticking with us through the off season. This is where championships are won, guys. This is where championships are won. You know, you know, you got to stick with it. Trust me. This is where you win your championship. Get your leg up on your opponents, and this is where you win. So thank you for checking it out, guys. Until then, we'll see you next time. Peace. See you later, guys. The preceding presentation has been brought to you by the Gear Network.